welcome to Steampunk Week here on Threadbanger. Um, 92 Red Revolver asked you never to speak in an English accent again, remember? Oh yeah, sorry about that. Yeah, well, earlier in the week you may have caught us on the Indie Mogul Test Film with Steve Nelson and Eric Beck. <laughs> Ahem! And Eric Beck. Oh, um... <laughs> There's one nice booty! Tell me about it. Okay, it's nice. Tell, tell me more. Drowned. Hey, come on. That's enough. This is a family show. Yeah. All right. Perp. So all week long, we've been hooking you up with steampunk-powered how-tos, and if you're still asking yourself what it's all about, an explanation is long overdue. So the steampunk aesthetic mixes the steam power turn of the century style fashion with science fiction and fantasy technology. Kind of like if the future existed in the past, if that makes any sense. To get the steampunk look, there's a few must-have essential pieces. The most prominent of all the accessories have got to be the goggles. Check out Mac Geek's video tutorial that went up earlier this week showing you how to make them out of simple household materials. Vests are also big, and for a few bucks, you can pick them up at any thrift store. Want to make your own? Check out the DIY tutorial sent in from fellow Threadbanger, Maniacal Mickey, over on YouTube. Decorative sprockets and gears are prominent features. I got a box of them for 20 bucks on eBay, and I can embellish my entire closet with them. Also accessorized with pocket watches, scarves, and big brass or silver buttons. But before all that, you gotta start with the base. A cool looking shirt. So today, I'm gonna show you how to make over a men's button up into a rad new steampunk top. All right, time to rework that old long sleeve you won't wear anymore because it has a big old grease stain on the front. Now grab some chalk and outline a simple breastplate looking pattern onto your shirt. Take some newspaper out and retrace half of your pattern onto it. Now fold over and cut out. Pin it to some extra fabric, in this case another long sleeve shirt I had, and cut it out, making sure to leave a half inch seam allowance around the entire thing. Now pin a hem all the way around your garment and get the sewing. Once your breastplate is complete, pin it and start sewing it onto your shirt. Now you're going to leave this portion of the garment unsewn so that you have enough room to get your head comfortably through the collar. Now take some silver or brass buttons and place up and down the sides of your fabric making sure to line them up evenly. Mark them out with some chalk and bust out a ruler to measure if you need to. These run roughly 5 inches apart from each other. Next take some of that extra fabric and draw and cut out two almost arrow shaped like pieces. Each one is going to be about 2.5 to 3 inches in length and you're going to sew all the way around leaving the bottom open. Turn them inside out, place them onto the shoulders of your shirt and sew them on. Now to get through the exhausting process of hand sewing all of those buttons on, making sure to leave the one in the top right corner off of your garment. You're going to want to sew that last button onto your shirt, right under where you'd like it to go through onto your breastplate, and create a buttonhole for it. And then once you got all your buttons on, you're done! For more on steampunk and steampunk fashion, be sure to check out brassgoggles.co.uk, steampunkspectacular.org, and the live journal Steampunk Fashion Community for more rad ideas. When we return, Cringe shows us how to steampunk it up for the ladies. Why haven't you upgraded to Vista yet? Just the bad things I've heard about it. Today, I'm going to show you Linda's Mojave. Well, that looked pretty simple. Okay. I'm actually blown away. I'm thinking I'd like to have this. Actually, this is Vista. Really? Ah, yes. The steampunk. To me, the style is very Victorian, and I love Victorian style. And of course, every proper Victorian lady needs proper undergarments. Cue the bloomer. I made these out of an old sheet from the thrift store using a great step-by-step -step PDF I found. If you have any questions about the pattern, I started a thread in the tutorial section of the forums. For the top, take out an old collared button-up and cut off the collar leaving about a half inch around the edge. Then fold the shirt in half and cut a low boat neck. Press and sew a hem all the way around the top and do four or five lines of shirring stopping where the buttonholes start. Then I cut the sleeves off and shirred the bottoms. Next, take out the collar piece and sew that raw edge up. Now put the collar, shirt, and bloomers in a tea dye bath to give them that vintagey look. Next, I was super inspired by the late 1800s bustle. So I recreated one using plastic coated wire and wire cutters. Start by forming a double circle that opens to your front. Use a ribbon to tie it on and cut five three feet long pieces of wire. Loop and attach them to the back like so. Then bend the loops inward to make them more stable. 
Next, you're going to use your wire to create many, many, many connectors to make this puppy really strong. Bending and twisting, bending and twisting. Use electrical tape to wrap around the waist section and various joints. Take an old half slip and stretch it around the form, pulling it taut and pinning. So it close here and here, and it'll look like this when you're done. For the actual dress portion, I found an old long formal skirt and ruched it up all the way around. Next, I took out the petticoat I made a while back and put my new skirt on top. Now comes the bustle and yet another old formal skirt layered on top. For this one, I did two sections of ruching on each side. I really like this design because it can be worn without the two bottom layers for a more playful look. And if you need a little bit more inspiration, go to trulyvictorian.com. There's an amazing selection of historically correct patterns. Also check out bustledress.com for a beautiful array of antique Victorian pieces. On to le corset. I got this one from a second hand shop, but it's not a true corset that does this to you. For more information on real corsets, go to laurascorsets.com. Not only does she have a ton of historical info about them, but also has an amazing collection of rare ones. Plus, there's a bunch of great links on where to get corset making supplies and info on making them if you're determined and patient enough. But my favorite corsets so far come from Louise Black. Aren't they just spectacular? And last but not least, accessories are an absolute must. Old brooches and long chain necklaces work great. I attached this old chandelier piece to my collar by using a strong thread and sewing it around the button. Then I made these matching chandelier earrings that I absolutely adore. And of course, you need a hat. I used the pillbox hat tutorial from Humble Bumblebee and attached some antique feathers and cogs. But for some true hat inspiration, check out Topsy Turvy Designs. Not only are the hats amazing, but the pictures are fantastic as well. Other accessory necessities include a nice form-fitting jacket, some boots, and a parasol. And now, your look is complete. Remember, this is my interpretation. Explore your own and have fun with it. Hey everyone, that's it for this week. One last reminder that the Genomi Serger and Sewing Machine Contest end this weekend. So make sure you get those submissions into us by midnight Sunday. To win the Serger, all you have to do is submit your best DIY video tutorial. And to win the new Threadbanger Genomi Machine, just send us in your most creative video, please. Good luck to everyone out there and see you next week.